Okay. We are live. And we're going to close, minimize all these windows. And we're just going to double check to make sure that we are live. Check my stream on my laptop real quick here so that my computer doesn't lie to me and tell me that everything's fine when it's not. So far. Okay, we're live. Beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna start by heading. We're gonna start by minimizing out of this, and we're gonna head to the Mogatari website. This is, of course, where you would start. Um, I am Remy Otor, the community manager, idea contributor, documenter, and tester uh, from the page here, and. Um, I'm going to be walking you through getting started making a new game. So, when you go to the website, um, you'll see this big download latest button, which will give you the latest version of Monogatari version 1.4.1. Um, version 1.4.1 has a lot of nice features, but I don't use it all that much anymore because I have been using the bleeding edge unstable version, um, Monogatari 2.0, which is on the development branch of the GitHub page. And that's actually the version that I'm going to be grabbing right now. Um, and is the one that I recommend people use because I like the logic that it is programmed in better than the logic I like the other one. Um, the syntax is a little bit more exact and uh, you can do a few more things in it um, that I don't know if we'll get to right now, but uh, the things that can be done in it are essential for a project that I was working on. And as such, it's the version that I am most familiar with and the one that I am most uh, ready to give a tutorial on. Um, if I try to use 1.4.1, I'm going to end up making mistakes and having to remember exactly the differences from time to time, and I'm not going to do that right now. So we'll start by going to here, clicking clone or download, and then clicking download a zip, and then we'll save it to any folder that we want. Um, in this case, to our downloads folder. Once it's done, we're going to open it, um, and we're going to grab the dist folder, uh, the distribution, um, and uh, inside of that, you will find, you know, everything you need for a Mono Guitar game. Um, cool. So next, we're going to uh, pop open the index page, index.html, and just take a look at the game, see what it gives us. Uh, what is your name? Remy? Hi Remy, welcome to Monogatari. Have you read the documentation? Yes I have, that's awesome. Then you're all ready to make an amazing game. Can't wait to see what stories to tell. Uh, that's the default thing you see whenever you start up a Monogatari game. And so we're going to look into what all that is. Um, we're going to pop open the script. I like to use... Um, I use a, uh, an editor called Atom. Um, when I'm doing my usual work in all by myself, but I'm going to pop open Notepad++ because a lot of people already have it installed and because it lets me make the text really big by just doing that. <laughs> and since we're going to be doing, you know, this for the viewers, um, I'm going to make the text really large so that you can potentially read it. Excellent. Um, so in the Mogatari script .js file. This is where you're going to be doing 99% of your work in the visual novel itself. And uh, that's because this is where the actual script of the game itself is. So you would go to like mongatari.script, you know, or, or, or the comment here that says the game starts here. 
and you'll see all this stuff. And basically, when I first started playing with Monogatari, what I did was I didn't read any of the documentation, and I just kind of popped it open, and I looked at each of these little lines and tried to, like, work out what they do. And I see, like, input text, what is your name? Ah, I remember that. That's when it asked me what my name was. Return input trim length greater than zero. What? Uh, revert function... Warning, you must enter a name. Whoa, what's all this mean? Um, and I just kind of figured out what it meant. Uh, length greater than sign zero. Warning, you must enter a name. Oh, let me pop back open the Monogatari game here. Index.html. Uh, start. What happens if I don't enter in a name? You must enter a name. <laughs> Ah, warning, colon, you must enter a name. Please enter a name to continue. Control S to save. Control F5 to refresh. What is your name? Okay. Please enter a name to continue. Ah, we've changed it. We've already made our game unique, right? Um, that's, the, that's the sort of thing that I would do and I would play with it. But uh, this time what we're going to do instead of all that, because, you know, you're here for a tutorial, um, not for a let's play. We're going to just um, make our game from scratch. So the first thing first, in order to make the narrator speak, all you have to do is type some words. And uh, as a best practice, end every line in a comma. If there's ever a problem with your script and like the game doesn't load and it just shows you a big error or worse, just shows you a white screen and doesn't even show you the, the main menu, um, chances are you're missing a comma. But And you don't actually need the last one to end in a comma, but I recommend just doing it because having the comma on the last one isn't going to break it and it's, it's, better, it's better this way. <laughs> Um, you'll save yourself a lot of headaches. So anyway, end it all with commas. Type some words, and we're going to gonna just pop open the in that explanation amount. We're we're moving real slow, but I assume that you're playing along at home. Um, type some words. There it is. Uh, let me just... Very good. Um, next, we're going to uh, have a character speak. Mo define the characters here on line 70. You'll see moangatari.characters. Um, moangatari.characters is an object that contains a bunch of little sub-object methods that are named after things like Y. Uh, and the way you make Yui speak here is by typing, uh, is by giving it a string that is Y space Hello, my name is Yui, and I am speaking to you. E. And she lovely. And we're going to just make sure that worked. Control F5 to refresh the cache. Type some words. Hello, my name is Yui, and I'm speaking to Yui. We've already added whimsy to our game. Okay, so that's all well and good. Oh, by the way, uh, don't be alarmed that my screen is black. Uh, I have this thing enabled. Um, let me turn that off real quick and try again. Uh, oh, I, I guess the screen is black by default. Well, anyway, dark reader is a great thing that makes your pages dark. Anyway, moving on. Um, so there's Yui. All right, so that's all, that's all well and great, but what is a visual novel without some visuals, right? So now we're going to turn into an art stream for a moment. <laughs> and uh, we're also going to make a new character. So let's make a new character and we'll name them... Uh, we'll name them... Let's go with uh, name, colon, Shine with a fancy E because this is my character. If you've seen my little icon on Twitch, she's this little blonde uh, girl with a ponytail. Kind of looks like Samus, but in like a fancy outfit. Um, and her color will be... Let's go with... Uh, um, she didn't get her caffeine today, so she's going to be the hex code decaf. 
Um, and we can make Shine speak by typing as. And uh, oh, and everything in commas. Just remember to do it. Um, Yui speaks, and then Shine speaks, and she's got slightly purple because she's decaf, and uh, she's here to help. Great. Um, but uh, like I said before, and I was buying time to open up my art program here. Um, this uh, this visual novel should have some visuals, so we'll make a face for. We'll make a face for Shine. Um, and we'll just make a quick one. Uh, I recommend when you're first playing around with the program to hash out some programmer's graphics as quickly as you can so it can be like just smiley faces um, if you want, but I can draw pretty quick, so we'll. We'll we'll do a high we'll do a uh, you know a nice in between of a nice in between of uh, smileys and uh, uh, wow okay yeah isn't she great okay so there's our hero and we're going to uh, save. We're just going to save a ping file. Um, let's find our game real quick. Hold on. I think I put it on the desktop. Yeah, we did. Um, so we're going to save this to the assets character folder. And we're going to name this Shine Face Default. PNG. Okay. And then um, back in our, we're going to check our assets folder, make sure it's there. There she is. Great. And then we're going to go to our, uh, excuse me, not that. We're going to go back to our script um, in Notepad++, and you'll see we have um, our character. And how would I go about giving her a face? How would we go about making her appear? Well, I don't I mean, I do know, but I'm going to pretend I don't know for the sake of this. I don't know how to do that off the top of my head. So, and there's no like example in the script of any declared, you know, picture. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Monogatari website and go to the documentation. Okay, developers.monogatari.io slash documentation. What happens if I take this out? Does it just, oh, it just, okay, yeah. And since we're in the 2.0 branch, we're going to go to the 2.0. But if you're using 1.4, you can go to 1.4 and get the information there for 1.4. Uh, but we're using 2.0 in this. So we're going to go here and we need to uh, display a character. So or we, we're looking to have a face display. So we'll go to, let's say, uh, characters. There it is. Characters. Um, and so now this shows you all the different ways that you can declare a character and all the different things that they can have. More than just name and color, you can also have a directory, specifies a subdirectory where sprites and expression images for each character are stored in case they are not in the root assets slash characters directory. That's useful. Why don't we go ahead and do that right now? Um, directory, and we'll name it Sh Shine, and, uh... Then we will, in our assets characters folder, we'll make a new folder called Shine, and we'll put this picture in there. And there she is. Now she's in her own little folder. But we want to declare a face. Um, default expression. Side image to show every time the character speaks. Sounds good so far. Um, did I do that right? Yeah, okay. Uh, and we're going to name it after our, uh, we're going to give it the, um, the name that we named this. Boop. And now we will refresh our game. 
and check to see if that default expression did things. So Yui doesn't have a face, Shine does have a face. And so when Shine speaks, now she has a face. This is not the visual novel pop-in, fly-in thing, though. This is like a bottom left corner thing, more like a JRPG from the Super Nintendo era, where they put, uh, where they put the character portrait in the text box. Um, so if you don't want this, there's a reason it is, you know, optional. A lot of visual novels don't have pictures there, but I find them pretty useful because there's a fun little feature here. Um, it says default expression, right? That implies that uh, there's a there's something an alternative to the default, right? So expressions object with an object with the identifiers and file names for each side expression available for the character. That's what uh, that's what this is called. It's called a side expression. So let's go back to our art program and make a little programmer graphic here um, of. Let's just erase this super happy face that we drew. And uh, maybe make a new layer. Uh, and then make a really sad face. Oh no. We'll give her sad eyebrows too, so you can tell that she's very sad. Yeah. Oh, it made her look so much sadder. Okay, and we'll export this as into the Shine folder. Shine face sad. Okay, and then we will um, define an expression. Uh, how did we do that again? Um, expressions. Okay, it said that it was an object, uh, but I don't necessarily know what that is. Let's see if there's any examples. There are. So, uh, expressions, side images, so smiling. Okay, so what I would do is I would uh, use curly braces in this example, and that makes sense because it's a, a JavaScript object. Um, curly braces, and we'll go sad, um, and we named it Shine Face Sad PNG. And so now we can test this. Oh, right. Um, I should explain uh, why this is neat. Um, Getting a little ahead of myself. If we go to, I'll just show you. I don't remember exactly where in the documentation of this. Um, what's neat about the uh, side expressions is I can declare them like I can invoke them like this by typing s colon sad space. Oh, by the way, I'm. A little down in the dumps. So she's not feeling so great. That's the face that we drew for her. Um, refresh the page after saving and start it up. My name is Sheena and I'm here to help you. Oh, by the way, I'm a little down in the dumps. So we typed in uh, S colon sad. S stands for Sheena and sad stands for sad. And she's sad. There she is. She's not feeling great. Um, and so as you type in, you can just, you know, if you want to just use the little side expressions, you have this great shorthand where you can make like a whole bunch of different facial expressions. Like you can make a happy, angry, lazy, drunk, excited, overwhelmed, sarcastic, determined, we're not going to do all those right now, but you could. And, um... And, uh, whenever you typed in, you know, S colon excited, it would show the excited face, etc., etc., etc. Um, but yeah, so most visual novels don't do that. Like I said, it's an optional feature for a game that's more like, you know, uh, more looks like a whatever. Um, one useful way to use it in a game that otherwise doesn't is you might maybe for a character who is only ever on the phone, like if a character's speaking on the phone, you could show the face down in the bottom left and you could make a separate character for any Anyway, um, let's go ahead and uh, make a 
Let's make this like a good um, 800 tall by 500 wide. Sure. Um, those are just numbers I pulled out of my butt. But okay. And we'll draw a Shine that's uh, one more time. And this time we'll draw her slightly better, but you know, not too much better. We don't want to. We don't want to work for free here. And then. Let's uh, just try not to worry about getting into the undo thing. We're just going to keep that jaw. Up. And we're going to try to keep her hair inside the frame. Okay. And she's all drawn. Wow. Isn't she happy? Got a little tired of drawing at the end there. It's it's late. Uh, we'll export this as uh, Shine standing. Dot PNG. Uh, I guess she's always going to be standing, so we'll call her Shine um, uh, Smile. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and we'll move on to putting her in the game. So how do we put her in the game? Um, so back when we were, so we're defining our characters and we have the sprites, um, an object identifier and file name for each sprite available for the character. And as you can see here, um, sprites has a uh, normal mad. It's, ju it's just like the way you declare the expressions where you pick a bunch of names for your pictures and then you give a bunch of, uh, you know, um, file names for them. Um, and uh, we'll just do that right now. Um, sprites in curly braces, because it's an object with a bunch of methods inside. Uh, so let's go with uh, normal. Normal's good. I should have named it normal before. What did I name it? Uh, smiling? Oh, well, it's fine. Um, normal is shine smiling dot png. And how do, now we gotta put her on the screen. Um, and the way we're gonna do that is by putting in a line here that it says image identifiers for the show statement. Well, show character. What you would do is you would do show character character ID. Okay, that's gonna be show character S for Shine. Um, sprite ID, uh, that's going to be normal. And then at class with animations and classes. Interesting. Um, we're going to do S normal at. So when it says at class, this is referring to a, um, a CSS class. Um, because Monogatari takes place in a website. And burn a web page rather. And when you go into like, you know, your HTML inspector, you can see that the whole page is a bunch of pieces. You know, this is an image object and it's got like, you know, it's got a URL to an image and people can like, you know, go look at your image. Um, cause it's just a, a, it's an image floating there on the website, just like any other website. And it's like in a div that is called data content side image. And, you know, you can give these things CSS rule like uh, height um, 40 px. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I need to actually click. The <laughs> I was holding the wrong thing. Um, height 40 px. Whoa, and look how tiny she got. And we'll just make her get bigger and bigger. Like, oh, I guess there's a maximum height because it's inside the box. It can't get bigger than the box it's in. But, but other than that, um, if we wanted to make the box bigger, we sure could. Let's make the box bigger. Wow. Okay, anyway. Um, let's get out of that, though. Uh, like I said, it's, a, it's an image on the website. So... Um, when it says at, what it's asking for is asking for um, a CSS class 
that will uh, decide where to put it. And by default, Monogatari has three options, left, right, and center. Um, so we're going to pick the left right now, just for the demonstration, and go in. Hello, my name is Yui, I'm speaking to Yui. Oh! And she appears on the left side of the screen. Um, also, I should have put that before she appeared, because um, show statements are different when you click... Uh, when you click past the Y here, hello, my name is Yui, I'm speaking to Yui, then I click, what'll happen is it'll do the show statement, and then it will immediately do the next thing. So, uh, Shine is here, and um, so we'll start, click, hello, my name is Yui, and I'm speaking to you, click, and there she is. Um, but, like, uh, and um, we could also have her appear on the right, we'll just... Uh, show that off real quick. There she is on the right, and we'll have her in the center. Is it center or is it middle? It might be middle. If center doesn't do anything... Uh, yeah, it's it's center. Okay. Um, let me just double check that it is center. This is going to bother me if I don't check. Uh, um, yeah, center. Center? Uh, there she is. Yeah, she appears in the center. Cool. Um, and that will put her there. Uh, additionally, if we go back to our documentation here, where it has uh, with animation classes, um, that means that I can do at center, and I can also type in, let's say, with fade in. Um, and there's a there's a list of all the little um, rules that you can put in. But here I'm going to click it, and she's going to fade in. Oh, she did not fade in. It, is it more specific than that? Sorry, fade in has a capital I. This is the sort of thing you're going to run into. Um, the computer, it's case sensitive. So if you have a lowercase i and an uppercase i, the computer regards those as two different words. And the, the library that we use for um, CSS uh, animation rules, well, anyway, it, it, she's going to fade in beautifully. Whoa, she came in a little bit smoother. She, she didn't just pop and blink into the screen, but rather she was smoothly in there. Um, but yeah, so we're using a, an animation library called animate.css. And there's like a whole bunch of little animations. Like, uh, let's go with bounce in up. And um, we'll type in, how's it go? Bounce in, up. Bounce, capital I in, capital U up. Uh, control S to save, and back to here, and refresh. Type some words. Hello, my name is Yui, and I'm speaking to Yui. And there she is, she bounced in from the bottom. <laughs> and uh, you can put, use a lot of those to make your game feel really uh, expressive and bouncy. Um, can I call the character name from the object instead of typing it? Uh, you... Good question. Um, generally speaking, you're not going to want to have a situation where you would change the character name here. But there are situations where you would want to be able to change the character name. I'm, that's the only reason I can think of why you would want to uh, not have to type the character name and instead call the character name. So one, you, one thing you could do, which we'll just go ahead and take a little diversion to answer your question, um, is let's say you want... Oh, I know a reason why you might want to call the character name rather than say the character name. Let's say you want to have the character's name appear purple when it appears. Um, whenever anybody says their name, you want it to appear the same color as it is that you define for them. That's a, that's a neat little idea, right? Um, we'll go to... For this, we're going to go into storage.js, and we're going to open it in Notepad++. So let's, um, let's talk about the... So, at, that, at this point, you've basically got everything you need 
for the visual novel if you want to make a game that is like kind of not a game and is actually just a book that is read on the computer. Uh, there are a lot of visual novels like that, like hundreds, um, because it's just a medium with which you can do. Like, if you think about it, you don't actually need to use Monogatari to make games. I could, if I wanted, make a webcomic that just has a series of comic pages that just appear on the screen like this, and you click the mouse one at a time to go next, 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 and people could save their place, right? And that would be a really usable webcomic website, right? Um, or you could uh, do other things, and uh, if, you, if all you want to do is make a game where people just go from start to finish and don't have any choices or options, but they just, you know, have sound effects and stuff, uh, well, I should probably introduce sound effects before I say we're done. Um, these are enough features. Um, also, uh, I should make a second character real quick to um, to show off uh, something else. Um, let's uh, make a let's make uh, Shine's sister because this is a setting with characters that I have, and uh, Shine's sister is like. She's like a cat who wears a scarf because I like scarves. There's a funny hat. Okay. Um, that's bad. <laughs> okay, so we'll export her um, to her own folder. Um, because I want to show you that you can have more than one picture on the screen. I never actually established that. <laughs> um, All right, so that's enough for uh, Shine there. Um, oh, hold on. This is the boundary for Shine. Cool. Um, we're just gonna name Shido Shido. Sh sh Both my characters have the same first letter in their name. That's troublesome if you want to make all your characters only one letter long. Um, okay, so uh, Shido's uh, name. Shado with a another t impossible to type character um, color uh, to contest Shine's being decaf. We're going to make Shado uh, coffee, and then um, directory. And then uh, sprites. Um, default, or let's not do that, um, uh, normal, and we'll name normal is, uh, I think I called it shadow default, uh, assets, characters, shadow, uh, shadow default dot png, yes. Cool. And then we will, uh, have Shine shows in the left with a bounce in up. And uh, show character uh, a shadow normal at right with, um, let's go with fade in. And just, whoa, I think that, that bouncy fade in has like a funny thing it does to the screen, but anyway. Um, okay, so yeah, she she shows up on one side and the other one shows up on the other. If you want to do some stuff where you like add a little bit of nudging them a little bit away from the sides, um, I can show you how to do that later. But for now, what left does is it puts it all the way on the left and what right does is it puts it all the way on the right and center puts it all the way in the center. And yeah. Um, so 
The reason I wanted to bring this up, uh, that you can have two different characters, is because there's this neat little feature where if a character is on the screen and that character on the screen is um, also speaking at the same time, like uh, Shine is the one speaking and Shine is on the screen, they get a special class called Focus. Um, so her classes are Animated, Left, Bouncing, Up, and Focus. Whereas Shado on the right here does not have focus. She is animated right, fade in, and no focus. And once we get to talking about CSS a lot and styling our game to make it unique in our own special game, focus is one of the classes that you're gonna wanna put the most styling thought into because you can do fancy little things where you like, like let's uh, let's make a focus rule right now. Um, dot focus uh size um or not size sorry uh uh scale is that how it's done is it scale let's go with um opacity uh and set it to 0.5 this is this is the opposite of what you would do but it's it's just one that i thought of right away um Shine is speaking, so the focus CSS rule applies to Oh I know, I know. We'll give her a border um thick uh green um solid. There it is. Okay. Um, yeah, so Shine is currently speaking, so when Shine is speaking, the she gets a border around her. You could do something like a drop shadow, or a glow effect, or just make the object bigger. Um, and uh, so if Shine speaks, and then Shado speaks, and then Shine speaks, and then Shado speaks, uh, Shine would glow, and then Shado would glow. and. By the way, uh, when you make your images, I recommend not making white boxes. <laughs> when you have your, your final thing, you're going to want to have, you know, PNG alpha transparency and all that so that uh, they, they actually look like they belong in the scene. But uh, for now, um, while we're just messing around, um, that's a neat little feature that, uh, that I think a lot of people would really like to see and have. Um, okay. Uh, now then, um, we're going to talk about storage for a second. Um, Storage.js... Oh, also, let me check the chat. Uh, okay. If I let the player choose the protagonist's name by calling it, I won't have to type it. Can I add padding or margin to the character so it won't be stick to the screen? Well, oh, yeah, I, I, you asked that right as I... as I, I didn't read what you said, but I, uh, but I answered that question. Um, how does Monogatari solve showing two characters on screen while is responsive mobile version? That I can demonstrate right now. Um, not particularly well. Um, the, uh, the characters get resized and they get, uh, set up. This is one of the reasons why the, uh, why the focus tab is really useful because, um, one, so you see how, uh, Shado is on top of Shine right now. Well, Shine has focus, so... Let's, uh, you can Z index, uh, set the Z index so that, uh, they would be above characters while they're speaking. And so if you had two characters that are like on one side of the screen and the other side of the screen, and they're both, you, you didn't choose your images very well. Because uh, you made um, you made images that are very like uh, you made images that are very uh, wide and uh, not suited to the uh, not suited to the size. Well, you could uh, account for that by making it so that if the character is ever speaking, they're in the front, and so they kind of move back and forth and replace each other as they uh, as they go back and forth their little conversation. Um, 
By default, though, Monogatari requests, if you're on a cell phone, that you play the game in widescreen mode. And if you try playing the game in vertical mode, it will tell the player to please rotate their phone. <laughs> because most browsers are widescreen, most computer monitors are widescreen, so uh, most games are going to be made to be widescreen. That being said, you can, if you want, uh, disable that and say and set it so that when it's on mobile, allow them to play vertical. Just if you're going to do that, I recommend um, you know coming up with these little tricks like this focus thing to make sure that uh, that it looks right. Um, the best way to deal with uh, how does it look on phones is to test it on your phones. Now then, um, regarding uh, your protagonist name. Let's say that we need the character to have a character whose name is, is uh, inputted by the player. Uh, the way we would do that is by using the uh, storage.js. And here's where we put our persistent storage variables. And these are important because these are variables that can be changed in the game. And if the player saves, quits, and then loads the game back up, these are the variables that will work when the game is loading. You, you want, if you want the variable to like actually be stored and, and persist in a save game and then load game, they have to be declared in here, which is fine. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, make, for this example, we'll make um, a Shine object. And Shine's name is going to be uh, Shine, of course, but let's make her name more complicated than that. And make her name, let's go with, uh, um, well, by default, it's going to be Shine. And then um, her, let's go with uh, N, you know, the short version of her name. Um, her name is going to be, uh, let's say, span style equals... Uh, color decaf um, probably want to do that with backslashes because yeah and then um I think I did that all right. Uh, cool. And then we'll go back to script.js here, and we'll declare Shine's name, kind of funny here, um, as .n, and then we'll double check that that worked. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to work, but we're going to we're going to check it. Yeah, there she is. Um, and my focus, my focus variable did not get saved because it was just in the uh, the sandbox test thing. So the so she's no longer on top of the screen. She's on she's underneath because she was declared second. If I change these uh, positions, um, then uh, she will be on top. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, whichever one comes last is the one that's in front by default. But um, if you uh, you know do shen shen shenanigans like I said before, anyway. Um, now then, uh, so right now it doesn't really look like I changed much, but if we go here and uh, and instead of my name is Shine, we changed it to my name is s.n um, and then refresh here hello my name is Yui and I'm speaking to Yui oh oh right I did not name her s here I named her Shine here um, let's uh, fix that Th thank you that was, a, that was a very helpful error message um, Okay, so why didn't that do what I expected it to do? 
Name Shine. Shine.n should be this span style color. Uh, let's figure out what happened here. Well, did that color not work? Is that the, oh, maybe that is the issue. Hmm. My ability to just type things is the problem. Oh, I. Great. Um, let's just. Uh, why don't we make this a primitive? <laughs> let's just fix everything. Um, style equals. There. We have three different kinds of strings in JavaScript, and by God, we're going to use them. Oh, that at? Still not showing it right. This should be a color. Why is it invalid property value? What? Oh, pff, I got rid of my. Oh my gosh. I got rid of the the amp the octothorpe the hashtag. Okay, now now you're just driving me crazy. Oh, they're not supposed to be quotes. They weren't supposed to be quotes. Uh, I look silly. Okay. Okay, there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I look. F I feel so foolish. Uh, there's no quotes in CSS. Okay, so my name is Shine, and now her name appears in the purple. So, in addition to that, um, my name is Shine. Uh, we can also. Oh, and. Uh, Change this to um, is that what I want to do? Is it storage? Doing that right? Oh no, I'm not doing that right. Uh, oh, right. Okay, I think I just do it the same way as before. Um, is that gonna give me a circular dependency? Is it really gonna work? Oh, wow, that works. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, very flexible. Okay, let's explain what I just did. Um, so, uh, Shine's name is Shine. And her N is a span that s designates a style that changes the color of the text to... Uh, to her to her decaf purple and then it also calls shine.name which is shine and then finally it closes the span tag so when she speaks here what happens is uh, she says my name is and then because in our script we wrote curly curly brace curly brace shine.n curly brace curly brace uh, it goes I need to go find shine.n and so we go and we get shine.n which is this whole thing and inside of that it goes well I need to find shine.name so we get this thing um, and then we come back out it says uh, my name is and then it says span style decaf shine close span and I'm here to help you which is, of course, rendered as my name is Shine, and I'm here to help you, but the word Shine is purple. 
now um, here's the fancy things we here's something fancy we can do. Uh, we can change that name um, because it is a uh, variable that is stored in our storage.js. We can use um, we can use JavaScript to we can use JavaScript to um, where are we data storage. Um, we can use JavaScript to modify those. Um, and uh, we'll find all that in uh, data storage. I probably should have had this page open. It probably would have made things a lot easier for me. Um, very simple. We can call a function that will change things. Um, so let's do that right now. Um, the way you call a function in Monogatari is very simple. You type in the word function. Uh, a, a, a parentheses and then immediately followed by a closing parentheses because um, all functions in JavaScript have a space to take in arguments and like in some situations you would like have stuff here but not right now we're not going to do that right now um, inside of these curly braces of this function we're going to put in let's say um, okay, so it would go this dot storage, and then inside of these um, parentheses, we're going to uh, we're going to choose the thing that we're going to change, which is going to be Shine's name. Um, so shine dot name will uh, call in shine dot name, and then we can change it to anything we want. Um, so we can change it to let's go with shine, <laughs> which is uh, similar but not the same. Um, and we can have uh, Shado say. Um, Actually, I find that E very difficult to type. Let's call you Shine instead. And then Shine replies, What? But without the difficult to type E, how will anybody know how unique I am? A crisis. Um, let's test how this. Uh, let's test how this worked out. Oh, I have a script error. Um, did I miss anything? Looks like on line on script.js line one one five is where my script error is. One one five is right here. Hmm. Where is, what is my issue? Is it one one five here too? Yeah, it is. Okay, what what's my unexpected token open brace? Oh, I did that. I did that totally wrong. Um, I don't need this to be in brackets. I need an equal sign. Sorry. Uh. In JavaScript, whenever you assign something to something else, when you uh, when you name a value, you will use an equal sign like this. Well, you can also use a function that does it, but, but anyway, um, this dot storage shine dot name it equals shine. One equal sign means I am telling you that that's what it is. Um, so let's come back in here and. Hopefully my error. Yes, no error. Good. Type some words. Hello, my name is Yui, and I'm speaking to Yui. My name is Shine, and I'm here to help you. Actually, I find that E very difficult to type. Let's call you Shine instead. Uh, it didn't fix it. I did this wrong. Hmm. Well, my my script didn't error, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Uh.
Let's see if we can divine how to fix this. Conditionals? Well, I am uh, at a loss. Why is that not doing what I expected to do? <laughs> In times like this, my strategy is to uh, pull open old games that I've already done <laughs> and uh, pull open my script from there and go see what I did then. Uh... That should be right. This.storage. Oh, wait. Oh, it's not this. It's monogatari.storage. Right, right, right. Okay, sorry. This would mean um, the uh, storage that is inside of this function. <laughs> you call this.storage when you're in the main script, but if you need to call the storage unambiguously globally, you will call monogatari.storage. Okay. Good that we're finding uh, these common errors because chances are you're going to end up making the same errors when you start playing around. And maybe, just maybe, by, by watching me mess around, you're going to go, Oh, wait, I remember this. I remember this. <laughs> and be able, to, uh, be able to fix the problem yourself. Um, so, uh, yeah. I will answer that question in just a second. I just want to make sure that this name renaming scheme that we've come up with actually functions. Type some words. Hello, my name is Yui. I'm speaking to you. My name is Shine. Uh, actually, I found the E difficult to type. Uh, her name is still the same name. Hmm. Troubling. It didn't change. Maybe it did change. Maybe maybe it did change, and I just can't see that because uh, things are loading differently, and I need to rethink the way I am doing this. But her okay. Her name is yeah. That name. No, it's not changing it. Uh-oh. Things crashed, huh? 